Hi family and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Brittany and I'm so excited to be joining you this morning. We know that so much is happening in the world around us at the moment. It really can leave some of us feeling uncertain. But one thing we know for sure, the Word of God is unchanging. It is our foundation and it gives us the hope we can live by. That is exactly what Dad is taking us through in the study, What is the New Normal? Let's enjoy it together. You know, one of the questions that I hear floating around and we hear it in, you know, obviously we got people reporting on the news and not everybody's saved, not everybody understands the kingdom of God. And so we'll speak from the perspective of the enemy, not that they are willfully and openly serving Satan, but the Bible tells us that before we are saved, we are of our father, the devil. And thank God that by Jesus having paid and given his life, we can be born again and saved into the kingdom of God, that we delivered out of that darkness into the kingdom of his son. And as born again children of God, God is now our father. And we take on his nature and we take on his word and his outlook on the kingdom. But before you save, we don't have that privilege. I know we try and be good people. We try and be moral. You know, most people are raised by good parents and we try and live our lives. But we are influenced by the evils of the world. And so people will say things. And we all did. I know I did. Said, I said some pretty stupid, dumb things before I got saved. How many of you would say amen to that? And I thank God that he showed me through his word how to clean up my speech. And so when it comes to how we communicate and how we speak and what we say and when we say it, these are very critical things. And so I get the idea very often behind what we say there's uh, particularly we who are born again, our desire is to serve God. Our desire is to do what is right and say what is right. But I've got to make sure that just because it feels good is not what I'm doing. Just because it seems like the right thing to say, even if it's politically correct, I won't ever do anything just because the majority are doing it. Say amen. amen. Ask the children of Israel. The majority did not want to go into the promised land. Was that the right decision? Pfft, give me a break. Spend 40 years walking around in a wilderness because the crowd wants to? No, not us. We're ready for a life that God ordained for us. And that's one of the things that I've been hearing floating around is, Pastor Allen, what's the new normal? What is the new normal? I'm sure you've heard it on the news. This is the new normal. And so, today's message title is, What is the new normal? Because if there is a new normal, we must know what it is. Say amen. amen. I don't want to miss anything if it's there. So, what about this new normal that we're hearing? Well, to understand normal, let's go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God created. Who? The earth was void and without form. What does that tell me? None of us were here. Not one human was here before God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word is the foundation to our lives. God is the creator of all things. You and I are His creation. Everything you see around you is God's creation. We didn't come up with the idea of God. God came up with the idea of man. In verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image. 
according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Male and? I don't see any others in brackets there. Just saying. That's not my message, but I'm just putting it out there. Male and female, he created man. Verse 28. Then God blessed them. And God said... Now, didn't Jesus say, you have what you say? God blessed them and he said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I've given you herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be food. Family God, God created man to have dominion over creation, not for creation to dictate to man what he must do. I'm not going to have some virus tell me how I'm going to live my life. Can I get a bigger amen? We put that thing down. We put it under. We take dominion over circumstances, situations. I'm not going to have my bank account decide whether I move forward with an instruction from God or not. If God has given me an instruction, then I fully believe he's also provided for it. And just because I don't see it in my bank account yet doesn't mean he missed the boat. If God knows exactly what's coming and he knows exactly how to get there and he knows how to provide for it, say amen. I'm not going to let my body tell me if I can continue preaching the Word of God or not. I'm not going to let sickness and disease put me down. I'm not healed just to prove that God is healed. I'm not just trying to get healed so I feel better so I don't have a sore throat. And No, I want to stay well and healthy because there's a gospel to preach. There are disciples to make. There's a work of God to do. We need to be out there as the church proactive, not afraid of sickness and disease. Come on, family. Do I get an amen on that? God sent his word to heal. God sent his word to deliver. God sent his word to protect, to provide. And he gave his blessing. That means his covenant word and empowerment. If he spoke it, it's done. Notice when he created man, he said, have dominion. But he didn't just say have dominion and leave them to themselves. He immediately put seed in their hand. Everything you need is contained in seed. Everything you want in life is, begins with a seed. Think about anything you ever got in your life. It started with something small. Isn't that right? That's why the word tells us to not despise small beginnings. The end of a thing is greater than the beginning. Even you on this planet started as a seed. Everything we do is based on that seed principle. And God injects that into this man, gives him his blessing, gives him his word, and tells him to go take dominion. In other words, this is God's normal. One of the principles you use when studying the word of God is the principle of first mention. When God opens his mouth and says something, it establishes it for eternity. You don't ever get God coming back. Well, you know, I said this in the beginning, but you know, my mind's plans have changed. God isn't caught off guard by anything. When 2020 arrived, God didn't look at Jesus and think, what are we going to do now? How you know, he fully knew what was coming. He fully knew what was going to happen. It might have caught us by surprise. I don't think anybody in their wildest mind dreamed that you could shut a world down. That Satan's capable of that. Much more shall the glory of God fill this earth. Come on, get a bigger amen. So if Satan can get a worldwide reversal, we can believe for worldwide revival. 
Oh, come on, I thought I'd get a bigger amen there. How many believe you for worldwide revival? And when I talk about revival, I'm not talking about the old way of things and we would just get into a building and shake a bit and fall on the floor. And, Woo, that was revival. I'm talking about a world that is designed by God as God intended it for right here back in His very first mention. The very first words you ever hear God speak is light be. And that is creation. That's the first recorded word. Obviously, God has been speaking through eternity. He's a God of words. And then once creation is in place, the very first words creation years is be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and take dominion. Now, family of God, there's no Bible version 2. People talk about the Bible being an old document, an old-fashioned book. No, that word existed before any man ever heard it, before any man ever wrote it down. That word has existed in eternity. That is God's foundation. That's, that's who He is. That's everything He lives by, everything He exists by, everything. And His entire kingdom is managed by that constitution. Man didn't come up with that. People talk about a bunch of, you know, nomads in a desert. You know, thousands of years ago, ignorant people wrote the book. No, they wrote what they heard. That book is more current than any newspaper. Than any book that went to print yesterday, this book is more current. When every book on this planet has burnt away and faded and gone, this word will still be yes and amen for all of eternity. God's never revised it. He's never changed it. He's never looked back. And repented. He's the one that has spoken. And as he said it, he will oversee it. And so if you want to talk about normal, this book is the normal. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. When? Yeah. Yesterday? Yeah. When's that? Yeah. When's now? 2020? And forever. When is today? Oh, don't look at me all confused. When is today? Now. You're waiting for a trick answer. Now, write that verse down and do an experiment. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, go read it. And I'm putting it out here. I know I'm bold. And I say some things boldly. And I hope I said what was right. I'm going to be bold yeah. I'm going to put something so out there. When you read that verse tomorrow. It will still say. Today. I guarantee it. Now I dare anybody to come show me. Otherwise. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Family of God, get that into your heart and believe it. That if Jesus said anything, if he said anything, if he said anything. I, you've heard me say it before. I told Jesus. I said, if you don't want me to believe something, you should not have put it in the book. If you meant except for Alan, I would expect that to have been in brackets behind the verse. If you meant except for 2020, you should have told us. Because if you said you provide every need, I'm going to believe you provide every need. I'm actually going to go so far as believe every. If you say that you heal all diseases, I'm going to really believe that word all. Because all in 2020 means... Why? That's what all man, and it meant when God said it. He didn't say, 
He'll heal all diseases except for these new modern things that are coming out. Yeah, he just didn't know these ones would come. No, he knew. And if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, family, if you want to know what normal is, it's that book. That is the normal. Say, the Word of God in my heart is the normal. Now, just to put this, we often quote the Scripture on its own, but I want to put it in context because listen to what he said. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Look at verse 9. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines. Now, I'm going to put in brackets there, or fear-based news reports. Now, that I put in there. That's why I put it in brackets. If you like it, keep it. If you don't agree, forget I said we can still be friends. Don't be carried about with various and strange doctrines. Family, we're going to hear a bunch of junk. Listen, in the last six months, everybody behind a keyboard became an expert. It's amazing how many experts came out. And everybody's seen this report and that report and this one and that one. Then you must and you must not. And then you can and then you can't. And then you should and then you mustn't. And then... So family God, what are we actually going to do? Well, God gives us wisdom. We use wisdom. Amen. Often people say, where's your faith? Well, my first question to them is, do you lock your door at night? Oh, strong Christian. See, we have to use wisdom. So we understand that when you're going through a season of something, you adapt to that season. You heard me say it often online. If there's a hungry lion walking outside the door and they say, Pastor, there's a lion walking past. I don't think, praise God, I've wanted to touch one all my life. No weapon formed against me prospers. And I'm going to go out there, hey, kitty. You don't do that. No weapon formed against me. God's for me. Who can be against me? If Paul shook off a snake. I can shake off a lion. Do we do that? No. But if a snake does bite you, then you can shake it off. But you don't go looking for snakes. You're getting what I'm saying here. So you stay wise. While something's going through, sure enough, buckle up the seatbelt when you're in a car. Put on your mask when you're amongst public at the moment. Keep the distancing, sanitize, etc., etc. We understand all of that. But that does not define a new normal. Our normal is God still heals every disease. Though I drink anything deadly, it will not harm you. Said it before I say it again. COVID-19 is not a death sentence. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. We've had many testimonies of people that have come through it and come out. Amen. The point I'm making here is we are not influenced by what the world is saying. We hear, we internalize, we go through it, we analyze it, but I'm always going to go back to God and say, Father, what do you say? Even if a doctor find something in my body and says this is what you must do, I'm going to say can you give me at least 24 hours? Not going to come out today. Give me, I just need to go and check with God if that's got to come out today. Because there may just be a new one right now being delivered. I don't know what angels use for FedEx or whatever, but there's an angel on the way with a new organ right now. And they are faster than 24 hours. I can have my new organ in the next hour, but I just need to go pray first. Are you with me? I need to first hear from God. And if God says, go ahead, then I'm doing it by faith. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But I'm not moving in fear. That's the key. Is that we're not moving forward in fear. I want to say it again and again and again. That's why when we come together like this, make sure you're coming in faith. Because we're doing everything we can to make sure that it's safe. But how do you know you can be on your own on an island? 
and fear something, and it can come upon you. That's what the Word teaches. My worst fear came on me. Isn't that right? So family of God, I want to encourage us here today. God is the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. All the things we shout amen to, everything we say hallelujah to, everything that felt good pre-COVID-19 is still yes and amen today. Your amen should be louder than ever before. We're talking about a new normal, is that we are not influenced by the evil reports we see around us. And of course, as the word says here, not be carried about by various and strange doctrines. Let's stay with what we've always heard. Let's stay with the word. God's not creating a new normal. God didn't need a disease to, give, to eventually create the church he's been looking for. Where do we ever get off thinking that the devil's going to be the one that God uses to set his church up correctly? Jesus said he will build his church. He will make sure the gates of hell do not prevail against it. And you look at this any way you want to. COVID-19 came out of the pit of hell and it was demonically inspired and it belongs where it belongs and goes right back and it dies in the name of Jesus. Can I get a bigger amen? One of the things that I've been hearing floating around is Pastor Allen what's the new normal? In a world that has been turned upside down with the threat of wars pandemics, racism and calamities Family God, God created man to have dominion over creation not for creation to dictate to man what he must do In this series Alan Bay delves into the promises in God's word Reminding us of the unchanging, all-powerful, ever-present God we serve. If you want to talk about normal, this book is the normal. He helps build our faith to stay focused on God in these unsure times. The very first words, creation years, is be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and take dominion. Visit us online or make use of any of these details. But get hold of your series and strengthen your faith to see God's power working in and through your life. This series truly is one of my favorites that Dad has taught recently. With the way things have been in the world, it's so easy to believe that that is the new normal. But I've noticed that leaning on the Word of God is our normal. It's how we've experienced these victories and promises coming to pass in our lives. I want to encourage you to get your hands on a copy for yourself so that you can continue the study in your own time. You can contact us at the details below. It truly is a powerful tool. Now, my friend, the first step to this normal that my dad's been talking about is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you haven't yet accepted him, I want to pray this prayer with you. So let's close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus. I believe he died and rose again. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. You are now my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And congratulations, my friend. I'm so excited that you've prayed this prayer. If this was your first time praying this prayer, won't you let us know? You can contact us at the details below. My dad has a free gift he'd like to get into your hand. It's just some tools to walk you through this new journey. We are so excited for you. Congratulations. Well, family, that's all we have time for today. Join us again tomorrow as we continue the powerful study on what is the new normal. My name is Brittany, reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Life is a choice. Choose life. With a call to equip believers to flourish in their ministries, Alan and Janine Bagg are the senior pastors of the Bay Christian Family Church, one church in many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church multiple locations.
Alan and Janine Bag invite you to join us this weekend at the Bay Christian Family Church for some great times of worship in God's amazing presence, for faith building messages from God's uncompromised word, and for some great times of fellowship with the family of God. You can join us in the Helderberg at these times at Section 3 Gan Center on the corner of the N2 and Fabric Street in Somerset West. If you're in the northern suburbs, you can join us at Durbanville Live at these times on the first floor of the Durbanville Conference Center found at 27 Wellington Road. And if you would like to join us at Power Live, we're on the first floor of the Berlin Center on the corner of Optonhorst and Berlin Streets. You're also welcome to meet with our family in Claymont in the Claymont Community Hall on Main Road. We also meet in Stellenbosch, so if you're in that area, connect with us at this location. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to, join the family at the Bay Christian Family Church this weekend for amazing times in God's presence and faith-building times in God's life-changing Word. If you're not close to any of our locations, feel free to participate in our online services over the weekend at alanbagministries.org. For any information relating to the Bay Christian Family Church, our contact details or our locations, please visit us online at alanbagministries.org. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details.